Well, here we are, folks. We've got a new pony in the stable. This is a Royal Enfield Himalayan. Four kilometres on the clock. Just picked it up from uh, the local dealer. Now I'm just going to uh, get this thing home and have a good look at it. Uh, first impressions, it's uh, quite comfortable to ride. It's um, got a fairly low seat height of 800 mil. I think that's only just marginally bigger than uh, the Little Red Rooster's seat height. Uh, that was one of the main reasons why I looked at the Himalayan. Um, I'm a confirmed short ass at around about 5'6", five, 5'5". Five, five. So a bike with a seat height of about 800 uh, suits me down to the ground. Uh, all the reviews and uh, YouTube videos that I've seen have sort of been fairly positive towards this bike. Uh, it's fairly capable from what I've seen. It suits the sort of riding that I'd like to do. Another thing that I've noticed above the, uh, the posty bike over the Little Red Rooster is the brakes work. Uh, this has got uh, uh, disc brakes front and back and they will actually pull the bike up when you want it to. On the uh, good old posty bike you sort of squeeze the lever and make yourself a cup of tea and hopefully it'll slow down eventually. It's not really that bad but that's a bit of an exaggeration but that's how it is. You've got drum brakes on the, on the Honda. Uh, it's probably one of the very few shortcomings of that bike But they weren't designed for the sort of stuff that I do, but you know, they're a great little bike But having having disc brakes is uh, Very comforting The Himalayan's got dual channel ABS uh, The rear channel is switchable for if you want to go off onto the dirt and take the uh, Manny Skid braking off. Just hold the button in and disengages. You can't do it on the fly, but that's okay. But one of the reasons I wanted to upgrade um, to the Himalayan is anyone that's seen my YouTube channel knows that I'd like to go out and do uh, rides on the backcountry roads. Posty bike gives you, you've got a bit of a limited range, even though I've got the long range tank on it. Um, it's a little bit slow if you want to go and do a multi day ride. Um, myself and James, my mate James, we did a trip out to Mount Capitar last year. Uh, you've probably seen that video, it took us all day to get out there. And uh, poor old James had to sit in third gear for the whole weekend. I was uh, ringing the rooster's neck on um, in fourth gear, but you know, just took us a long time to get anywhere. And so I figured, larger bike, a bit better gearing. This is a five-speed bike. Um, probably got the same range as the rooster with the long-range tank, but just be able to get there a little bit more comfortably, a little bit quicker. Uh, this will do highway speeds comfortably once it's run in so it opens up opportunities for me places to go and things that I want to see there's there's limited opportunities around here around Tamworth uh, to see stuff uh, I've seen a fair bit of things around here but there's stuff a little stuff a little bit further afield that I want to go and see and even if it's just as a day trip it'd make it a lot easier to do it on a, on a slightly bigger bike so that's, that's the rationale behind getting this. Um, I'm still going to ride the rooster. Yeah, I'm not going to pension him off just yet. But having the Himalayan opens up possibilities for me for other places to go to. Other things to see. Just get out a bit further. One thing you may have noticed just back then is I actually did a gear change without the clutch. And that's one thing that I've got to get used to. 
is actually using the clutch. Uh, the CT110 has a centrifugal clutch, uh, which only engages when you back off on the accelerator. Whereas this has got the traditional manual clutch that other bikes have. Uh, I haven't ridden a bike like this, so it's taken me a little bit to get used to. Just remember to hit that clutch before I change gear. Um, it will come second nature to me eventually, but at the moment it's something I've got to work on. Considering I've only had this bike a day, um, I'm bound to make a few mistakes, but we'll get there. It's all part of the learning experience. Well, that's an interesting feature of the Himalayan. Um, certainly don't have that on the posty bike. Uh, if you start the bike up and you put it in gear and the side stands down, you can shut the bike off. So it obviously doesn't want you to ride off at the side stand down. Uh, that's never an issue on the posty. You've got those little rubber feet that are an extension of the side stands. So at the first corner you get to, the rubber, the little rubber extension hits the ground and flicks the side stand out of the way. Not so with the Himalayan. Luckily it has a little warning light or message on the dash here that says the side stand is down. So luckily that little display is there. I was quickly able to look at that and go, oh, side stand, okay, fix that up and off we go. Another thing that I've really noticed about this Himalayan in comparison to the Posty bike, uh, it's nice to ride a bike with suspension that works. Uh, on the dirt section back there a little bit, we had some sections of corrugations and you could kind of feel them. You, I could see they were there, but um, certainly not the bone rattling experience that you get riding a Posty bike through corrugations. Um, like the brakes on a posty bike, the suspension's it's a merely a thought. Okay, well you've got some suspension there. Kinda works, maybe. I still love the posty bike, don't get me wrong. But I'm just really enjoying riding this Himalayan. <laughs> 